Hello! We are back for more tea tasting, this time not matcha. Today we're going to be looking at the November 2018 edition of the Tea Crane Tea Subscription Service. I have been holding on to these teas, waiting to get up and going with my YouTube channel here. I'll be going through relatively quickly so that I can get caught back up, and then the idea being that once a month I will review that month's edition of the subscription box. One note for this particular edition, the, the November 2018, I have had all of these teas already, um, so I'm not going in blind, unfortunately. Enough preamble that so what will we be tasting today? In each of the subscription boxes it comes with three different teas. In this case we have one sencha and then there is a wakocha which is black tea, quite uncommon currently in Japan. And then of course there is the hojibancha. I have already gone ahead and weighed out each of the different teas here. In these tea tasting videos, I'm always going to try to follow the brewing recommendations from the package or the provider. Two things that I'll have to keep in mind are the actual brewing vessel. For example, the Sencha and the Wakocha recommend 200 milliliters to 4 to 5 grams and 4 grams respectively. I do not have a 2 milliliter brewing vessel at this time. Secondary, I'm going to always try and brew in porcelain whenever possible. The closest I have is 170 milliliters, so it's just slightly under that 200 milliliter recommendation. And tokenami clay is going to have an effect on the flavor as well. Until I can expand my range of brewing vessels, there's just going to be some situations where I'm unable to brew in porcelain at the recommended sizes. It's going to affect the flavor to some degree and there's just not a whole lot I can do about it right now. That's these two and then for the hojibancha that recommends 10 grams into one liter. My largest teapot I have period is this glazed cast iron teapot that comes in at 800 milliliters. I have 8 grams measured out here for my 800 milliliter teapot. And with that, the last thing I want to cover is that each one of these boxes comes with this, uh, the tea passport he calls it, right? So this is all the information about the tea farm, the tea farmers, and each individual tea as well as their brewing recommendations. So when I said I was using the brewing recommendations, it's coming from this packet right here. Uh, I don't think I mentioned the bancha is also a green tea, but it is a roasted green tea. So it's still a green tea, but you look at it and you see brown, you, you might think it's something else, but no, it, it is still a green tea. It is just a roasted green tea. The first step is I'm going to brew up the, the bancha, and then we'll cut back after the brewing here is done, and we'll give our first impressions. And just like that, through the magic of editing, we are back, ready to taste the first tea. Hoji bancha has been brewed up. I poured a bunch of it into the Gangdao Bay here for the taste and then the rest of it went into a uh, thermos. Will not go to waste, but I'm not gonna sit here and drink 800 milliliters of tea on camera. And likewise, I have other thermoses set aside so that I can work through the infusions of the other two teas. And then I can give you the impression on how the tea progresses through the infusions without having to actually drink all of those teas right in a row. Hojibancha, brewed up, and let's give it a taste here. I really love the smell coming off of this hojibancha. I love that roasty smell in general. Quite light, very fruity. Yeah, kind of a light, delicate red, orange fruits like peaches, apricot, strawberry, raspberry, just kind of a mixed berry and some stone fruits. It's really good. It's almost got a little bit of floral notes. Not as strong like a lilac or something like that in your face, but kind of a a gentle, sweet kind of floral note. Very sweet, it's kind of surprisingly sweet. I don't get much roast notes, like um, nuts or, I suppose it's a little bit, there's some warmth to it. There's, yeah, maybe like a, a golden honey. As it starts to cool off more and more, I'm just starting to get a little bit of that hint of that fishiness. I wasn't a super big fan of it the first time I brewed these up, but very impressed, especially with how fruity and sweet those first few tastes were. I think it's starting to cool down just a little bit too much now, but one more. Taste here. Yeah, very smooth, very drinkable. Slightest, I'm noticing just the slightest bit of astringency now coming on the top of my tongue. So for the Sencha, if we look back into our brewing guide, our native Sencha suggests a number of steepings, three to five. In the 200 milliliters to four to five grams, I have four grams weighed out here already. Looking quite quite good. You know, Sencha is a, a typically a cut and roll leaf, but there's not much dust in here. Smells very grassy, very good. Bring out our, our Tokonama Kyusu. 
and then we'll add our Sencha in there. So we have four grams going into our 170 milliliter Kyusu. Temperature 90 degrees Celsius and a steep time of 40 seconds. And then it says, uh, again, suggest a number of steepings three to five. Enjoy several steepings by taking a short brewing time for each infusion. So we'll do the 40 seconds for each and we'll move through. We'll do all five and just see how that rounds out at the end there. Real quick recap, we're gonna have 170 milliliters to our four grams, and we're gonna brew for 40 seconds. And that is 40 seconds, give or take. Beautiful, beautiful, kind of radioactive green color. We'll take our lid off so that the leaves don't stew as we sit here and taste. Pour a little bit into our cup here. We'll give that a little bit of time to cool off. I have not had a lot of sencha. This is only the third sencha I've ever had, but when I had it in the first tasting, it was my favorite sencha easily out of any of the cinches I've had thus far. Again, very small sample size, but an exceptionally good cinch, and I'm really looking forward to tasting it again. You don't wanna rush drinking your tea. If it's still too hot, just let it sit. It'll, it'll still be there waiting for you. I know it can be difficult to see a, a beautiful cup sitting in front of you and not wanna drink it, but you don't wanna burn your tongue. Uh, one thing I remember reading here from the tea sommelier book that I read, one of the things I mentioned in here is uh, for serving temperature. that the ideal temperature for enjoying tea is between 104 and 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. So when we brew at 90 degrees, you know, the, the Kisu is gonna take some of that and then the Gong Bay is gonna take some of it and your cup is gonna take a little bit, but we need to drop basically 40 degrees to really get into the kind of that ideal temperature for tasting. Maybe that should be good enough. Mm, yeah. Such a sweet sencha. It's, sencha is known for that rich umami. Really, Japanese teas in general, right? If you think about what is Japanese tea known for, it's known for their sencha, they're known for their matcha, and they're known for their gokuru. All green teas, all very high in that L-theanine and that umami flavor. Um, the, the shaded nature and how they eke out as much of that as they can is what Japan is known for. And this is an excellent example of that. In addition to being that deep, rich, vegetal, umami packed sencha, it has, in this case, that light sweetness that goes along with it. So you get a little bit of bitterness, and in the first flush of any sencha, it's usually the least bitter, and it kind of builds up a little bit as you go along. There's additional extraction that's happening that is just unavoidable as some of that water gets trapped in between the leaves, and then that starts to overextract, and some of that will carry on into the next infusion and so forth. So your first infusion of a sencha is always gonna be the sweetest, and this one just has that sweetness in spades. So good. You can still see the, the cloudy nature, nice, thick, so good. My first sencha was so bitter that it really put me off and I know it was an incredibly high quality sencha. It was one of the maid leaf senchas in fact. So sweet. No bitterness really in, again in this whole first infusion. Fill this up. This will be infusion number two. Pour a little bit into our cup here and again we'll let it sit for a little bit. You can see those bright bright greens, yellow greens. Sencha is a very pretty looking tea if they're ready. Mm, yep so there's that a little bit of that bitterness starting to peak in, but for Essentia, it's still, quite, at least in my experience, again, my limited Essentia experience, this is a rather tame version of the bitterness. A little bit more astringency also coming through. I believe typically Essentia, they say to do three infusions. Okay, yeah, so in Japan, three successive increasingly brief infusions draw out three distinct flavors of tea. Sweetness, gan, bitterness, ju, and astringency, Ku, kind of a typical three-stage approach to the brewing. And you really do, that. the sweetness on this first one is quite pronounced. The bitterness, like I said, is coming through in the second one, but it's not, it's not off-putting. Ooh, I just got like a little bit of watermelon rind, kind of. This does have that bitterness, but there's a lot of conversion into sweetness as well. So it'll give you that hit of bitterness up front, but then it'll start to dissipate into sweetness as I was waiting for it to cool down just a little bit longer there talking. It did get quite sweet, especially on the sides of my mouth. Very good. Yeah, there's a little bit of like that melon bitterness. Quite nice. Like infusion three now coming in. So we had the first infusion, very, very sweet. We had our second infusion, which brought in some of that bitterness. Now, if the book is to be believed, we will now move into ku or some of that astringency. All right, let's give this a taste now. Still some bitterness, but it has died down some. Now, astringency is a physical sensation, right? It's not really a taste, 
So I'll drink a little bit more and see how much of that astringency is starting to come through. I am kind of shocked at how little that bitterness is still in here. There is still some, but compared to that second infusion, it's like a quarter, maybe even less. It's not as sweet as the first or as bitter as the second. Can't really tell yet how much astringency. Sometimes astringency really hits you and sometimes it can take a little bit to kind of build up. It's, there it is, yeah. I'll let it sit here as I talk a little bit. There's definitely some astringency, but again, very mild astringency. It's kind of mind-blowing how much that bitterness is just almost completely gone now. Following that prescription of a Japanese green tea, this is almost like a perfect encapsulation of that concept. I almost don't want to do the fourth and fifth infusions as recommended, but I will do them just to see kind of what happens. We're out to infusion number four. So let's see what this fourth infusion will bring now. Pour all of that into our cup. Kind of a grassy sweetness and some of those richer, browner undertones, uh, cereals. It's definitely starting to taste weaker. There's less of everything, right? But it's there's still a little bit of greenness. Some of those more cereally notes are starting to poke their head up just a little bit, but they're kind of muted. It's just kind of a simple sweetness. I would say. Yeah, nothing really in the way of bitterness. Maybe just just a little bit at first, but. Mostly just kind of a simple sweetness. Not even like a honey sweetness, more just a like simple syrup. Not quite as intense, but just that kind of simple white sugar sweetness. But it's not bad. Without knowing anything ahead of time, I might say that it was like a green tea brewed Western style, right? Just kind of weak, not enough leaf to water. It's not bad. But I don't think I'm going to bother with the fifth infusion. It said four to five, and I think this one's definitely hitting its limit here at four. But overall, absolutely love this sencha. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Okay, our kisu is uh, washed and rinsed out. Our gangdo bay and cup have been rinsed out. And our kettle has been brought up to 98 degrees Celsius. For Nara native wakocha, we want 200 milliliters, of course 170 in our case. Four grams of the tea leaf, 98 degree water, infusions of 90 seconds, and suggested number of steepings, three. Brewing at a high temperature will release the tea's aroma more strongly, according to our notes here. Let's take a quick look at these leaves. It's a nice, nice looking leaves there. Add that right into the kisu. Give it a quick spell here. Oh, um, in a lot of black teas, you'll get kind of a, like a sour overripe red berry note. And I'm getting that very strong coming off of this black tea here. Again, black tea, very uncommon in Japan. Really love being able to taste some of the black teas that are coming out of that country. We're just getting a lot of that sour, overripe, red, raspberry, strawberry, guava. Let's hit it with some water and wait our 90 seconds. Nice, deep, rich, reddish brown colors. Take our lid off here and we'll give it a quick smell. Those sour fruit notes are super strong. A little baking spice, just a little bit of kind of cinnamon nutmeg. Definitely get that hit of the sour fruits up front. Ooh, there's a little, little banana. Yeah, there was something else that caught, I caught it there. It wasn't overripe sour. It was a distinct something, kind of tropical-y. It's got a really nice mid aftertaste. I'm not a big fan of that kind of super overripe sour note, but after that kind of moves out of the way, it's got this really nice kind of tropical banana, fruity, creamy note coming through. It's definitely got that sour, overripe fruit that is well within black tea and I feel like it's just just a touch high for my preferences in this particular example of a black tea but that that's something that's happening in that middle right between initial hit of that sourness and it's kind of it's kind of pleasant aftertaste it's kind of almost a little minty a little tingly uh, sweet there's no bitterness maybe just the slightest hint of astringency but not bad yeah I wouldn't really say any maybe just a, it's hard to when you're doing teas back to back especially with something like astringency and bitterness which can linger, right? How much of that is coming from this infusion of this tea and how much is left over from the sencha that I just drank. Yeah, that middle ground. It's still a little bit of that high note on the sour berry lingers, but then there's a kind of a creamy banana note that happens in there as well. And something else a little tropical, maybe nutty, like a macadamia nut and banana. Mm, might be stretching just a little bit. Maybe convince myself of it. So the leaves are really starting to unfurl there. Still that sour fruit note, super, super prominent. It has died down some from the initial 
infusion. It's not as sour as it once was, but it's so such a strong note it's very difficult to find anything else hiding behind it. I do get a little bit of the banana too on this smell. Oh definitely more baking spice and that yeasty bread coming much stronger now in the second infusion on the, the liquor in the Gong Dao Bay. This is a much more pleasing smell. Flavor is more in line with that second kind of stage. It's more prominent now. The very first hit of that sour note is still there, hasn't gone away, but it's much more muted, much more enjoyable cup. That's not bad. Still has just a little bit too pronounced of that sour note. Even in the second infusion, it's still there. It's definitely better. It's one of my least favorite parts of black tea is kind of that sour red fruit note. I love fresh red fruit notes when I can find them, but that sour overripe, not a big fan of that in general. And it is relatively common, so I can't really fault the tea for that is not outside of the accepted norms of a black tea. I just got a little bit of that caramel note. Just a little bit. But I did sneak its head in there. That was very nice. I like that. Last one to brew in here. Okay, our last infusion is all brewed up here. So this is infusion number three. Still a little bit of that sour note hanging on. But as you can imagine, since that was the predominant flavor, when that starts to dissipate, there's not much left here either. There's some sweetness. Perfectly drinkable. I've had way more black tea than I've had Sanchez. So that depth of experience gives me more grounding when I speak about black tea. As far as my first Japanese black tea goes, I would say I'm not super impressed, but I'm not super off-put either. Not exactly high praise. My least favorite of the three. We've now tried all three of the teas of the November 2018 edition. I wanted to talk a little bit more about the teas themselves, aside from just how they taste. This packet here contains a whole bunch of information. It's not just how to brew the teas but includes a bunch of information about the individual teas themselves, as well as information about the producer and about the farm. And there's a little forward and just a little bit of kind of background information. This particular month focused on what a cultivar is and why this is a little bit special. So basically all true tea comes from one particular species, Camilla sinensis. There's a couple others, there's the Assam, and there is Camilla taliensis, I believe, but they're all basically the same species. Now what differentiates teas is the varietal, also known as the cultivar. Just like a pit bull is the same species as a poodle, they're very different. The same thing with tea, they're the same species of plant Camilla sinensis, but the different varietals or cultivars imparts different flavors and what makes tea a endlessly fascinating beverage to explore. There's a lot of well-known cultivars that are known for certain properties like Taiwan Jin or Daihan Pao. These plants, once they're grown, if you want to have more Yabukita, depending on the farmer's techniques, you would basically clone that plant. And how you do the cloning varies slightly from one farmer to another, but the idea is you more or less would have a clipping from one, you'd then transplant that and then grow a clone of the original. There's a bunch of different techniques of how you actually do this cloning technique, but the point is you're not taking the seeds and planting them and growing a new plant, you're taking the existing living growing plant already and cutting off part of it in some manner and using that to start the growth of a new plant. What happens is you need to have two different parents to pollinate the flower in order to grow the fruit, but when you do that, that means that you have genes from the father plant and the mother plant, and now, just like humans, that child is gonna be slightly different. It's not gonna be a clone of the mother or a clone of the father, it's gonna be slightly different. Once you get the fruit from a non-self-fruiting, self-pollinating plant, the seeds for that are gonna produce a new type of something. So, it's a long-winded explanation, but the point is, when you wanna create a new Yabukita plant to expand your tree farm, that is going to be a clone of another Yabukita in some format. The Nara native, which all three of these teas were Nara natives, what that means, the native part of that means that they were grown from seed. All three were Yamatomodori seed grown plants. In Nara, which is here in Japan, This tea farm took the Yamatomodori plants and instead of cloning them into new plants, they actually took the seeds and planted new plants. So these are all brand new tea plants that have never existed before. So that's a little bit about all the teas. I would pass on the Wakocha. The Sencha for sure was a standout in this month's offerings. Absolutely get that if you like Sencha. It's only the second Hojibaicha I've ever had, so I don't have much to compare it to. If that was a 
outlier or if it was very in line or but uh, I thought that was good feel free to pick up all three and experiment yourself but if you're only going to pick up one the highlight again pick up some of that Sencha super good thanks for sticking around to the end of this video and I hope to see you on the next one bye